you beautiful people, and welcome to this video of Google Gadget Trauma! Inspector Gadget. What a quirky little helicopter hatted fella. Many people have very fun memories of watching the old cartoon and seeing what crazy shenanigans our friend Jonathan Brown, the inspector with gadgets, was getting himself into. And I never had any memories like these. My only exposure to the character was the 1999 live action movie version, which some might say is clearly a very dangerous environment for a child to be in, but I survived. I don't really remember much about the film, but I remember seeing a disturbingly realistic foot a lot and some inhumanly white teeth. The more I try and remember it, the more these images keep flashing in my brain like PTSD flashbacks. But before we get into this, we're trying to get up to a thousand subscribers, so if you could like and subscribe, it would help out a lot. We open this movie with a painfully long animated intro of them building the letter G. You know, G. As in, why did they make this? But we're introduced to our main character, Jonathan Brown, aka that one Ferris Bueller guy, and he seems to be the best police officer in this weirdly green town. As there's a runaway bus and everyone is like, oh my god, where's Officer Brown? Help Uncle John! <laughs> where's Officer Brown? Like, I understand that when it's a superhero, but this is just a guy. It's like saying, Oh my god, that train is about to plow through the orphanage on Puffy Visiting Day! Where's David? What am I supposed to do? But somehow he's able to save everybody involved, He's a god amongst men, at least he would be if that actually happened, but it was all a dream. With the classic, kissing someone in your dream means a dog is licking your face trope. And I haven't seen one of those in a while actually. But it turns out that he's only a security guard and he just wants to be a police officer. So he can use his superpower of throwing dogs in the air full time. But for the time being, he's stuck living with his stupid niece and easily throwable dog. Uncle John, it's not the badge, it's the heart behind it. I'm very proud of you. What the hell is that transition? They really didn't know how to get to the next scene, did they? Oh, it's an emotional scene about him being enough to eventually fulfill his dream? Yeah, just stick the flying foot in it, it'll be alright. This chip is gonna make the whole gadget project work. Dad, concentrate. Try there it is! There it is! The disturbingly realistic looking foot. Oh, the gross lighting on it is so nostalgic. That's weird, right? But this is Brenda, our main love interest and her dad. They're working on a gadget program to make robo police officers. Because of course they are. What else did you think they'd be doing? But the way this technology works makes no sense. Wait a second. That's it. It's animated by will, not by thought. By your heart, not your head. What does that even mean? Is will not thought? Does willing your body to do things not use your head as well? Getting out of bed in the morning is an act of pure willpower, and I have to think about that a lot. For a big juicy brain scientist, you sure are saying some dumbass stuff. But the foot works. Yeah! <laughs> But it turns out that Jonathan actually works as a security guard where Brenda's lab is. Now that sure is a coinky dink. Definitely not like he's been stalking her and got a job where she works so he can try and get closer to her. Nothing weird about that at all. But as he's trying to put the moves on Brenda, a shadowy villain with a shadowy evil white cat releases a remote controlled van. Sykes release a remote control van. And crashes through the lab wall, stealing the foot and straight up murdering Brenda's dad. I did not expect full on murder within the first 10 minutes of this movie. But Jonathan vows to catch the killer if it's the last thing he'll do. Unfortunately, the last thing he does is explode. But as he explodes, it sends a bowling ball into the air and landing perfectly on the villain's hand. Because of course it does. Which leads to him getting a claw hand and using his big evil brain, he comes up with a cool new nickname. Just call one word, like Madonna. My god, he's a genius. But John got messed up by that explosion. And I mean, really messed up. The fact that he even survived is ridiculous. So Brenda the scientist lady and the mayor all decide to make him the subject of their new gadget experiment. This seems like a pretty life-changing experimental surgery that you're doing on this man. Shouldn't you like, I don't know, ask him first? Wait for him to get out of his life-threatening coma, recover, and then get his consent to rip out all of his organs? But I do love the surgery scene. <laughs> They have this open body in front of them, and they decide, oh yeah, some toothpaste could fit in here, and shove a light bulb in there, yeah, that'll work. It's horrible. So when he wakes up, all of his gadgets start malfunctioning and going crazy. What? 
This man is the cutting edge of modern science and robotics. He has all the gadgets he could ever need to end crime and protect this city. Gadgets like a toothbrush, a, a balloon, a Pez dispenser, and bubbles. What about, I don't know, a gun, a nuclear warhead? You know, things that could actually stop crime. And now that he's a cyborg, they fitted him with cartoon sound effects. So now for the rest of the movie, almost every move he makes has its own cartoon sound effect. And whilst this is happening, the villain is trying to build his own robot soldier, but he can't quite get it to work because he needs this special chip that Brenda made. Now this chip, the most powerful robotics chip in the world, your body couldn't possibly function. And I'm just gonna let this next clip clip speak for itself. Did the robot implants make him react like that? Or has he been in monkey mode this entire time? We then get the big reveal of his iconic suit. Your new wardrobe. They revealed that like how Marvel would reveal a big new character coming in from the comics. Who was sitting in the cinema freaking out when this suit got revealed? Well, couldn't I say something more official like, in the name of justice? <laughs> well, you could, but it wouldn't work. But go, go, Gadget, it sounds so... My father designed the program and he... Oh, 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 it's go, go, Gadget. Go, go, Gadget just seems like a silly thing to say. You know, my dad who practically built you and is now dead thought it was cool. Like, okay, calm down. Go, go, Gadget oil slick. He said, go, go, Gadget oil slick and toothpaste came out and you're blaming him? You set up the gadgets, that's your fault for hooking up the oil slick voice prompt with toothpaste. And look at the sheer volume of toothpaste that came out of him. Toothpaste takes up like 50% of his internal storage. Well, he's training how to use all of his gadgets properly, so he's here with like a guru guy to try and teach him how to get better at it. And again, I'm just gonna let this clip speak for itself. I don't know what to say, except that eyeball bulge made me physically sick. We then get introduced to the Gadget Mobile, who I hate, but it has a built-in drinks and M&M dispenser, so that's cool. And I can't help but wonder, who owns this car now? I'd love to see this thing out in the wild, but it was probably destroyed immediately after shooting though, which is sad. But now Inspector Gadget is officially going to be brought onto the police force, with some more traumatizingly horny robot stuff. Wowzer. She taps on his back and it makes a ding-dong sound. Excuse me? But at this ceremony, the big villain man, who has a desk with his net worth built into it, he appears and tries to steal Brenda away, leading John to use his gross and incredibly impractical eavesdropping gadget, his ear. So she works for the big bad guy now. Surely that'll involve some really interesting detective work where she has to try and take him down from the inside. Nope. It pretty much only serves a single purpose in this story, and that is that now the big bad guy has access to all of her secret files about the chip and how to get the robots actually working. And Inspector Gadget is now working for the police, but the police chief hates him and doesn't give him any of the actual cases, which is kind of understandable because he has literally zero police experience. But now we see the villain's plans coming to fruition. He has built an exact robot replica of Inspector Gadget. And there's the inhumanly white teeth, I knew it! But this fake Gadget immediately goes off on a warpath. Got any money? Uh -uh. <laughs> Which is exactly how everybody should react to children. But whilst this newer and let's be honest, cooler version of Inspector Gadget is swinging people around like a god, the real one is driving around listening to All Star. And his niece is actually the one that breaks the case. Oh, what about that? Skolex Industries. Hello! Finally, there's a detective in the house. So then he warns Brenda and then immediately gets captured and killed. Again. No, seriously, he's dead. Brenda finds a sex robot of her that the villain built and he died. The sex robot version of her that the villain built immediately unalives itself and he's still dead. He was looking for evidence, got caught, and we get a good look at his insides and there's just a full tape measure in there. 
and a camera inside his body that would never see the light of day. They put a camera in there. Why? But Claw pulls out his chip and destroys it. And now we get to see the extent of the havoc that this fake gadget has been doing all over the city. And this looks like a full on apocalyptic scenario. Thousands of people have been murdered. This is an event that will go down in history, but they immediately find the real gadget, the real John, and how he comes back to life is so stupid. It's a miracle. He doesn't need the chip. It's my Uncle Tom, that's what it is. Because the robotics respond to will more than they do thought. Oh my god. I hate that. It's got the same vibe as when they explain a character not succumbing to a virus or something, as they just really didn't want to die. Like all the other people who died simply just didn't want to live hard enough. But okay, the Gadget Mobile pulls another ex machina out of its ass and grows a full on rocket engine. And when they catch up, you'd expect a Gadget versus Gadget fight to be really cool and really creative, but no. Was that not climactic enough for you? Brenda also gets herself caught immediately. The element of surprise. Oh, surprise. What a pleasant surprise. Gadget somehow ends up with his trousers being pulled down. I really can't tell you how they got into this position, but this bit is mildly disturbing. Hello? Hi, Mr. Gadget. Nicole and Kim, how'd you get the number of my hand? <laughs> the tarantula out of the mouth is a crazy way for this movie to go. And how do you think he defeats this evil Inspector Gadget? By outwitting him with an array of gadgets to get the better of his admittedly stronger foe? Or by pulling the takeoff head lever that's on the back of his neck for some reason? Hey, <laughs> Why build that into your unstoppable killing machine? But now we finally get to see what we've all been waiting for. They've been teasing it all movie long. The famous Inspector Gadget helicopter hat. Go, go, Gadget Chopper. Wasn't it as epic as you'd always expected it to be? Until it gets hit by a missile. <laughs> then it becomes a bit less epic. He ends up getting caught by the landing things, whatever they're called. And this is how he gets out of this impossible situation. Try to visualize your goal. Can you explain that to me? Can you please give me a step-by-step -step analysis with physics of what just happened? But they land via umbrella and now they're in love with a big kiss. Oh, isn't that lovely? The gadget mobile catches the villain and then the movie just kind of ends. There's some post credit scenes of minion recovery. My name is Sykes. Hi, Sykes. Hi, Sykes. And I'm a minion, but it's been 30 days since I last kissed up to anyone. <laughs> Which I actually kind of like. Especially when their names in the credits are Famous big guy with silver teeth Famous big guy with deadly hat Famous identifier of seaplanes Famous assistant to Dr. Franken something Bane of the bumbling idiotic yet curiously successful French detective's existence I don't even know what they're referencing anymore Oh, and the dog talks Brain, say something, come in, over Brain is not here Please leave a message at the sound of the wolf. Wolf! They snuck that right in there at the end, and I'll never understand why. This movie is loud. It's an hour and 20 minutes, but it just doesn't stop. There's constantly like five sound effects happening at the same time, so it really demands your attention. But I thought it was kind of decent. It's just a fun and stupid film, which they apparently made a sequel for, which I had no idea existed, but we might check that out at some point. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. We're slowly getting closer to a thousand subscribers and it would mean a lot to me if you did. And if you do, then I will never go go gadget horny monkey. I promise. Have a great day.